Bootstrap 5 has finally announced their very first alpha, but what does that mean for you? What has changed, what is new, and what do you need to know to get started? Well, in this video, I've read through everything there is, and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know in the shortest amount of time possible. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now to get started, I just have their announcement page open up for Bootstrap 5 Alpha. And as you can see, the very first thing is they created a new logo. Okay, that doesn't really matter. But the next thing you see here, super big, is that they dropped jQuery completely from Bootstrap 5. And this is something that is absolutely huge in my opinion, because if you want to use Bootstrap, you would always need to bring in jQuery, which is a fairly large library, and a lot of the newer features of JavaScript really make jQuery obsolete. You don't really need it anymore. So the fact that Bootstrap 4 relied on it was a big annoyance for a lot of people that didn't want to download a massive JavaScript library just to do things that are already built into the browser. So with Bootstrap 5, they completely gutted jQuery out and rewrote everything using just normal JavaScript. And because of this, they actually ended up dropping support for Internet Explorer because a lot of the things that jQuery was doing for them was Internet Explorer related, but now they've removed jQuery and they completely removed Internet Explorer support, which I also think is absolutely huge. Another thing related to that Internet Explorer dropping is that now they're going to be using CSS custom properties on top of SAS variables. So as you can see here, for example, inside the table component, instead of just having these SAS variables, they're also going to be exposing these custom properties in CSS, which I think is huge. Not only is this going to clean up the overall source code of Bootstrap, but also many times I would want to access these variables in JavaScript, but I couldn't because they were SAS variables and not CSS custom properties. So I'd have to copy these values over into my JavaScript code. Now with this though, I can access these different CSS variables inside my JavaScript. I can update them in my JavaScript. I can do whatever I want to with these variables in JavaScript or CSS. And I think this is huge because I no longer need to rely on these SAS variables or copying things between JavaScript and CSS. This is in my opinion, a huge step forward for Bootstrap and that's that they're improving their customization documentation. Because I know for me personally, their old customization documentation was very, very lacking. It was very hard to read. And pretty much the best way to customize Bootstrap was to go into the source code, read it, and figure out exactly what you needed to customize to change your colors or to change your other SAS variables. Now they've increased their documentation. I've read through it. It's much better than it was before. I still think it could be improved, but since this is just an alpha, I think it's a great start. And I really hope that they improve their customization even more to make it easier to customize Bootstrap because the biggest problem with Bootstrap is it looks like Bootstrap. So the more you can customize that and the easier that is, the better I think this is going to be. Speaking of that, they added a bunch of additional colors to their palette. This is kind of nice, not super important, but it's kind of nice if you want to have a color palette. They have one built in and you can also customize it. On top of that, they updated their forms here. And this is a set of a lot of minor changes, but I think they really add up to a lot of good things. So I read through the documentation on forms. One of the biggest things which they mentioned down here is they completely went custom for all of their checkboxes, radio buttons, and switches down here, as you can see. They're 100% custom. They're not relying on any browser defaults. And I think that's a good move. It just makes it easier to work with for them. It makes it more uniform across browsers. And overall just gives you a better, more bootstrap kind of feel to the site, which is exactly what they're going for. On top of that, they cleaned up quite a bit of the code that's built around using forms because many times you would use forms and you would use these forms instead of like rows and columns to make some kind of grid layout. They made that all much easier by just kind of building the layout for forms into that grid system. So you can really easily work with the grid system inside of forms. And it works much better than before because before you had like form inputs and you had form controls and all these other things nested inside of each other, form groups. And now they just kind of cleaned all of that up, removed all that and made it mostly just about the grid system so you can lay things out exactly like you want. I think that's a huge positive as you can see, fairly straightforward code. Now that's some of the bigger changes. Another change that I think is really cool is another customization related change. And that's this utilities API because with Bootstrap 4, they added a bunch of utilities like margin and padding utilities. And with Bootstrap 5, they're kind of doubling down on that, adding in all those utilities, but also adding in the ability to make your own custom utilities. So you can add your own utility to this utilities map, essentially. And here they have like width and margin, for example, but you could add in your own, for example, position or something else. And that allows you to essentially create your own custom utilities. So if, for example, you liked a utility from a library like Tailwind, you could just take that Tailwind utility 
copy it down here inside of your Bootstrap code, and now you can use that Tailwind utility or custom utility you created inside of Bootstrap without having to write that out yourself. You can use this nice little handy API they've created, which lets you create these different utilities. Another nice thing about this is you can remove utilities that you don't want, which is a great way to clean up your code to make your CSS file smaller if you don't want a bunch of their built-in utilities. Now moving on, this I think is another huge change is they're upgrading their grid system, but they're not doing it like they did with Bootstrap 4. When you change from Bootstrap 3 to 4, they changed their grid system. So essentially you had to change the size of absolutely every single thing to be smaller. So you went from like medium to small or from small to extra small and so on. And it was a huge pain to work with. Upgrading from Bootstrap 3 to 4 was an absolute nightmare. And they realized that that was a problem. So they said, we're not changing anything from V4 to V5. All the grid classes are all going to be the same size. They're all going to be the same responsiveness. All of that is going to stay exactly the same to make it much easier to upgrade to version 5 when you want to. The only thing that's really changed is that they're adding in a new grid tier, extra, extra large, which is kind of nice because monitors have been getting huge. A lot of people have really large ultra wide monitors. So having a way to interact with those larger sizes is good. And then also something I think is really important is they're adding in another utility for the gutter of your rows and columns that you can see here, gutter five. And this works very similar to like margin and padding. And I think this is a great thing to have. Not only does it give you vertical spacing options, which is huge, not really something you could do very easily before, but it also gives you horizontal spacing and really just a great way to work around your grid system inside of Bootstrap and makes it feel much more like your native CSS grid implementation, which I really enjoy. Other than that, there's not really too many huge changes coming with this Bootstrap 5 Alpha. A lot of the stuff is really similar to what we've seen before, but as you can tell, they're adding a lot of new things and really trying to modernize Bootstrap 5. And something that they're trying to add in, which I think is really important, is right to left support. Essentially, if you're in a language where the text reads from the right side to the left side, like in English, you know, you're left to right. But if you're in a language, maybe like Japanese, for example, you're reading from right to left or from bottom to top, something like that. They're trying to add in support for that so that you can more easily support these right to left languages because it requires a lot of additional work to make sure your site works right to left and left to right. So having that built into your framework like Bootstrap, for example, is a huge win for Bootstrap and accessibility and something that you can't really get very easily on your own without writing out a lot of custom CSS or custom logic in your HTML. So I'm really excited to see where that goes, but that is pretty much everything in this V5 alpha. They do have a starter project that you can go to, this NPM starter project, which is just a great way to get up and running with the project immediately. So I'd highly recommend this if you wanna get started with Bootstrap 5. And that's everything you need to know about Bootstrap 5 Alpha. If you wanna see some of my other videos, make sure to check them out, linked over here. And also let me know if you wanna see a full Bootstrap 5 tutorial when it reaches final release. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.